on video and you're gonna be able to hear me all right? Yep. Okay, ready? Ready whenever. Hi, I'm Diab von Briesen. Thank you guys for coming today. I'm gonna to give you just a, a real quick whirlwind tour of the EcoBox project. So just to give you a little bit of background, we're here at CPCC uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, Central Piedmont Community College. And a couple years back, they gave me a faculty fellowship to do some independent research and I chose to design a self-contained living This is our library, and below us is a Pee's Auditorium. And behind Pee's Auditorium here is the Eco Box. And uh, we're in this location, unfortunately, because due to city zoning and permitting issues, we couldn't put it right on the ground, so we had to put it on a trailer, so it's treated as a vehicle, so we don't have to worry about all those building headaches if it were an actual building. But it is a shipping container, it's on a trailer, and you'll see that a little bit more in a minute. But I want to direct your attention to a couple of things. If you come over here, number one, you see four flat panel uh, solar collectors. Those are on loan from a company called Sincera that's here in town. And uh, they're using just temporary ballast holders, so they're heavy bricks that hold them in place so we don't have to penetrate the roof. The roof is salvaged metal from a local junkyard. We got a really great price, and this is corrugated steel that's typically used for doing um, office building floors, and then they pour concrete over them. So the nice thing about them is they disassemble and they interlock and we can remove them so if we want to transport this and be legal on the highway we can take the whole roof off. We've sloped it slightly so we collect all the rainwater. The rainwater comes down that surface. It stays pretty well clean except for pollen and some things like that. It goes into the plastic white gutter you see there and then goes down into some storage tanks. So we'll get a closer look at that later. Also the, surf, the roof is, uh, is sort of reflective so it's a light color. It doesn't collect as much heat. Um, as you would with a dark roof and in a place like Charlotte heat is a big issue in the summer because we have to basically do all our air conditioning by protecting from the sun and using minimal electricity. Uh, you also see the first windows and those we cut in the side and how we painted the whole box white. So we'll move on down there. And a couple things you notice here is first of all the angle of these panels is not optimal. In fact this whole location is not optimal because in the winter that building up there is going to block most of my sun. Uh, but as a proof of concept, it works. And ideally, we'd have it in a field or we'd have good southern exposure and we'd rotate it. And this, fa this side facing us would be the southernmost side. And the sun would never really hit the box. And we would adjust the awnings so that the sun would stay off in the summer and then hit it in the, in the winter. So I take it back, not never hit the box, only hit it when you wanted that heat. So we come over a little further. And you can see here how the um, the the rain, the rain water comes in there and we're looking at different ways of doing the gutter. This was the first prototype and basically the water goes in there and then flows down into this tank which was donated by a local rainwater uh, company. And then temporarily we have a sump pump there that then pumps this rainwater into larger tanks. So we've had a lot of rain in the last few days and so those tanks are all pretty much full. And this whole assembly here of the wooden porch and being up with a bamboo skirt at the bottom is simply because we're up on a four or five foot trailer. Normally this would be on the ground and you just have a little 12 inch porch and you'd be set or you could put it on the side of a hill and configure that anywhere you want it. Also notice just the aesthetics here. We have a French door and two standard windows with the panes in there. So this was sort of our contemporary, si our traditional side and then the other side is contemporary. We have windows without panes and some, some more interesting designs. So we're gonna walk around there real quickly. Now also a lot of the water from this stairway, actually we had that channeling into one of the tanks, um, cigarette butts and all, so it provides some opportunity for students to do some experimentation with, with cleaning the water. So we're going to come in the back door here, and this is out of sight, out of mind here on campus. So um, we're working on designing actually a rocket stove, which is a really efficient way to burn leftover wood so we could burn pallets and things. You've got some tubing here that eventually we hope to use for thermal heating. You put the hot pipe out in the sun and it heats up water. Uh, lots of different experiments going on. This is from our Center for Sustainability. It was doing a worm composting bin. Um, I've, I've been collecting lots of building material. Here we actually donated uh, solar thermal collectors. These are actually from the 70s. 
and they'll heat water up to where it'll actually burn your hands. So we use this as a demonstration for visitors. So these tanks are um, a thousand liters each. And eventually we hope to have, you know, five or ten of them. At the moment this is just kind of a proof of concept. And you can see this tank is full up to about here. And probably it's overflowing near the top because we've had a lot of rain. And you can see this tank is full. We haven't really gone with, you know, purifying or anything. But if you, you can't really look in there. But if you could, you'd see the bottom. This is very, generally, very clean water. Um, although there is some algae there. Um, it's basically like a really clean fish pond. And you can see the kind of pressure you get on this tank, which is, say, three or four feet full. You get a pretty nice stream, right? Um, and this is all just right off the roof. This is pretty much rainwater, um, which in a pinch I would drink, but it's not legal to drink, you know, so we're not doing that yet. But the plan is eventually to have this equalized and have a processing system. Um, and based on our estimations of the roof, we should get about 12,000 gallons a year, which for two people gives you seven to 10 gallons a day. And we think we can do that, especially if you reuse the water. So right now the water comes into this tank, flows through this hose into this pump, and this pump then turns on when uh, it gets full enough and sends that water up into the tank. And incidentally, this is powered from the box, which is all solar power. So the, it's powered right now fully from the photovoltaic system. We'll go ahead and go inside. <clears throat> and this it really is a construction site, so I apologize for the general you know, chaos here. And I tell people we have everything and the kitchen sink, because this is my kitchen sink, and that we just have to build the kitchen first in order to use that. So make sure no one's home. And you can see we're very much uh, under construction. So this is kind of, we're in a mild, mild uh, temperature right now. So we're experimenting with using an air conditioner to see how well we need to insulate to get this to cool it off. Right now it can't keep up. You see the blown cellulose there, which is shredded newspaper. It's moistened and then blown against it. And then we've sheetrocked this in. We still need to plaster. This would basically be your kitchen area right here. We have a bar here with some stools. So you could eat breakfast or what have you there. Um, come over here, this is sort of a living area. Maybe we'll have a big couch there. This sheetrock, of course, will be gone. And you've got another French door here. So when you have nice weather, you can open both French doors fully and have a nice cross breeze. In addition, um, those doors can be shut. You can use this as kind of an in and out door or even a back door. We've got a wind turbine, which uh, in any other environment might work well. Charlotte simply doesn't have any wind, so this is for teaching but we just don't get enough wind here to make it really practical. Although we, we do plan on hooking it up because people get happy when they see windmills. And this is our photovoltaic system. So you come over and get a good view here. We basically have what's called a combiner box. This brings the solar power from above in a DC voltage and it brings it in. I think we're at, we're at about 75 volts and uh, it, it runs that down and we can turn that off at any point. So you have, can cut it off here and eventually the generator will run here. So if you want to, you can power the whole system with a generator and this will be the cutoff for that. It goes into this MPPT, which is a uh, maximum power point tracker. It's basically a fancy battery charger or charge controller. And it's feeding in uh, at about 26.5 volts. So this is a 24 volt system. It's bringing in 65 volts and it's putting out 2.6, it's bringing in 2.6 amps at the moment and putting out about six amps. So that goes down through here into a battery bank. Let's see if we have a key here. Um, sorry, so this is where I need to add lib to myself uh, while I wait for myself to find the keys. So those of you there can start asking questions. Would help if I had keys to the batteries. Can you see if they're on the other side of that? Um, got lots of keys to the front doors. Not keys to the batteries. Well, anyway, there's, some, there's a bunch of honking big batteries in here, and uh, let's see if that one will open up. Oh, that, another storage box. But anyway, so I'll keep on going, and then those batteries come out here into this big cutoff switch, and we'll have two battery banks. We've got another one there, and when we plug them in together, I'll be able to switch from one bank to another or feed off of both of them. And this goes to this really nice outback inverter, which converts this to 
AC voltage, so it's just like your household current. This in turn goes to a sub panel and we have a cutoff for that as well, so I can shut off the whole building by doing that. Um, or I can shut off power to this by turning this off. So there's safety all along the way and we tried to build this to code even though we're on, we're on a trailer and don't necessarily have to. And then this is like a normal house panel. In addition, Verve Lighting Systems was kind enough to donate this unit and what this does is it has wireless remote control of 10 circuits here. Specifically, that means we can have cool switches like this. And you see when I turn this on, that light goes on. And this is an exterior light. And when I click it again, it goes off. And you can also build in dimming features. So if you click and hold, that becomes a dim. Or if you have a double one, you click them both for a third circuit. So basically, there's no batteries or anything in this. What's cool about that is it basically uses piezoelectric. So just the force of me pushing on it generates a small radio signal, which then turns that light off or on. So this will never run out. I can put it in my pocket. I can put one under my pillow. I can put one in my car and not have to put in the batteries. Whereas a switch like this, which operates a surge strip, this actually has a little battery. And we all know what happens when you have little batteries, right? <laughs> it's just a headache. And here we've got some different demonstrations when we give tours. For example, here's a, um, here's a light that's meant for third world where you've got a solar panel here and uh, that runs a really bright LED. Um, then you turn it off and then during the day you can go put the panel out in the sun, get it fully charged. Now picture a kid in a small village somewhere who can't do his homework at night, so you take this and plug it in. Even better is you might have a little wire that just charges this and this is plenty of light to read by. You can't see it maybe so well right now, but it's nice and bright. They sell these at Ikea, and for each one you buy, they donate one to someone in the third world. Then you've got lights like this, which are compact fluorescent. Um, we've got LED lights here, and a lava lamp to just to demonstrate how you can do a lot of heat. So we're trying to teach at the same time that we build. Um, so moving right along through here, so you can imagine once this is cleared out, with a couch, a TV, and notice this big window, this was also salvaged, this was from the ReStore. This is our contemporary side. People joke that it's the South Carolina state, you know, I call it the cutoff Superman, or, you know, extendable Superman. And uh, depending on, imagine you're in, a, in the woods somewhere on the side of a mountain, you're going to have a really beautiful view here, and this window cost us all of $20. But installation was interesting. <laughs> so, we go back through here, um, also, salvage doors here. We're still working on the best way to do the ceiling. We're going to insulate that a lot. And then this will be a bathroom. And basically it's just storage right now, but we're going to have a composting toilet and a shower and sink. And just experimenting now with what we might use for that. We've got the window and the lights and the wiring all hooked up. And then this will be the bedroom, which is also storage now while we do the sheetrock. So basically big enough just barely for a queen size bed, or it could be a bunk bed, or trundle bed, or a Murphy bed with a little desk, or what have you. Again, two nice windows that open well to, to cross ventilate, so you don't get a sense of claustrophobia because you've got a lot of light and a lot of room. So that's that. Any immediate questions from you guys? Um, I'm good. You're good? Okay. So. And along the way, we've acquired a bunch of different tools, you know, like we got a thermal, thermal sensor, so I can see right now it's about 86 degrees up there. It's about 84 right now. So right now it's a pretty mild climate, but it's been up to 120 up there. And um, in the winter, it'll freeze if we don't get the insulation done and figure out how to heat this bad boy. Okay. So that's that, and uh, I hope that within another semester, we really have it looking nice in here. We've got some nice furniture in Ikea stored all over the place and, and nice decorations, and hopefully we'll have a way to microwave food and refrigerate and do all that stuff um, once we get our batteries all hooked up and our solar panels charging properly. All right, so let's walk around and just finish the tour on the outside. <coughs> We've always got people coming in smoking because it's an attractive front porch. So these cargo doors, these cargo doors <coughs> can open up to expose that main, that other door. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. Again, an opportunity to ask questions if you're there watching this and not quite. It helps to distinguish your work passwords from your own passwords. about these containers is they're really, really strong. 
They're designed to hold um, 60,000 pounds of cargo and to be stacked nine high. So you do the math. So what we're putting in there is nothing for what this thing is designed to do. This is really heavy duty steel. So you could even just use this as a main door or a back door if you wanted and uh, put your, your brooms and your rakes and things like that here. We're hoping to actually open this up and build a nice balcony here. So you could put this in the side of a hill and have a nice balcony or this could be steps or what have you. So a lot of flexibility once you put it on the ground. And it's actually much nicer when it is on the ground. So you come over here, you got the, the full side view. Maybe you can just step up on the hill here and kind of see that. So window air conditioner will eventually be replaced with a mini split system. Hopefully something really efficient like a Shark or Samsung that'll run off maybe 300 watts and do the heating and the cooling as a as a adaptable, um, what do you call it, um, an inverting heat pump. Um, the window just is always kind of one of those cute things. Not easy to replicate. If we were to do a lot of these, we wouldn't be able to get a window like that. But still, I wanted to give it something to make it unique. Um, and then just little light fixtures, which we could easily disconnect. So if we were to put it on a truck and ship it down the road, we wouldn't have to need any special permitting or anything like that. So the whole thing is designed to fit within the profile of a standard container. Um, and even with the extra stuff, would not be wider than eight and a half feet. So we don't need any special road restrictions. Just put it on the truck. We would have to disassemble the roof. And the goal is to have two people be able to set it up in two days. Right? Or take it down in two days. So other than that, that's about it. And uh, the, uh, this bamboo stuff is just kind of temporary experimental because the people here didn't want the wheels showing and we've got some storage underneath. But of course, if this were in a proper location, we'd have it on the ground facing south, preferably out on your land in the, in the, uh, in the hills where you'd be vac vacationing. Or if we have a hurricane um, in the outer banks, we could drop these down and you could have emergency workers or police, what have you. And the minute we set it up, you've already got power, even if the power is out because it's all stored in the batteries. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.